Hey, what's up, Scott Balkin here with Imagination Creation Films, and today, well, we're doing a close-up. Well, more of a macro. Well, it is a macro. The Irix 150mm Cinema T3.0 Macro Lens. Ooh. So before we jump in on this review right here, I want to take a moment to ask you to go ahead and click subscribe and, you know, join us in this wonderful community because, well, we think you'd be a great part of it. So let's dive in to the macro. Full disclosure, Irix did send this lens to me for evaluation. As always, I am free to say whatever I want. It is the way I do things and hopefully you've come to trust that because I mean, I'm gonna tell you what's wrong and I'm gonna tell you what's right and I'm gonna tell you what I like and I'm gonna tell you what I don't. And uh, yeah, I mean, that's just me. So what this is, is, well, it's a 150 millimeter cinema version of a macro and it is pretty substantial. Let me give you a little background into macro world with me. I love macro. Macro is one of my favorite things in nature and in products all over the place. And for about five years, this has been my go-to lens. This is the Canon F2.8 100 millimeter image stabilized full frame macro lens. And it is pretty phenomenal. It is tack sharp. It is absolutely amazing and stunning. It does full frame. It's 100 millimeters. That's cool. Now, where comes the problem with this? Well, there's not that many problems with this lens. It's great, but sometimes it doesn't quite have the reach that I need. I have been dabbling with macro tubes. I use the 70 to 200 Canon with macro tubes just to get in closer. I'd love something a little closer, but I'm unwilling to give up the sharpness of this lens. Well, this little guy shows up and immediately, the first thing I do is I'm like, well, let's just see how sharp we can get this bad boy. Ooh, ooh, it is really, really sharp. And it's 150 millimeters. Hmm, that got my attention right off the bat. It is a T3.0, which in all effectiveness is an F2.8. T stops, if you're aware, is an actual measured uh, amount of light, and this is a calculated with an f-stop. I don't know why stills glasses that way and cinema glasses not, but they're effectively the same f-stop. It is really, really sharp. It is really, really sharp. As you can see, it's sharp. I don't know if you can say that enough, but it's sharp. And honestly, with macro, that is what you are literally concerned with. How sharp is it when it's up close? This thing wide open at, at T3 at 150 millimeter, which, you know, it's a fixed focal length, so it's always going to be 150 millimeters. Its close focus range is like 14 inches. That's a one-to-one -one magnification, which is tremendous. But it's right up there, and it's gorgeous. Do you really want to run it at... T3, no, you really don't. Because if you look, you can see you get this incredible banding. And that is not anything that has to do with either of these lenses other than when you're that close of focus at a shallow depth of field, you're literally talking about a millimeter or less is what's in focus versus what's out of focus. So it kind of makes it a little tough to work with. And, you know, this one I like to stop to about... Well, about f5.6 or so, it gives me a little better uh, depth of field at that what's remaining in focus. And it's sharp. It's sharp at T3. It's sharp at 5.6. Uh, I have not tested it to its maximum iris of 32. Uh, honestly, I don't ever shoot anything at, at T32. That just seems weird to me. But I understand why you would sometimes if you need everything in focus. But even still... Not everything's going to be in focus with a macro. Let's talk about what it is. It is a cinema macro. And there's quite a few cinema macros out there. There's not a whole lot of 150 millimeter cinema macros. It can focus from 14 inches. I think it's like 14.2 inches all the way to infinity. It has a T3 to a T32. It has 
a completely declicked, I mean, it's a cinema lens, it shouldn't be clicked, but as a declicked iris, it has an 11 blade iris on the inside, as you can see in this beautiful B-roll shot. Um, it has 0.8 pitch gears. Uh, they're very smooth. They are weather sealed if you are running a UV filter on the front. So I'm assuming what that means is you got to put something in the front or else it could seep in. Uh, it's not waterproof, but it's weather proof. Uh, I personally, I don't put my gear into that much danger, although I have uh, occasionally gone up against a waterfall uh, a time or two. So yeah, I mean, weather sealing is important. They are smooth. They are quiet. They are built nice. So they're metal. They have an interesting feel to them. Um, they feel almost like plastic, but they're not plastic. They're aluminum. They they have, and I'm assuming that's just the weather feel to them. They kind of have a, a, a rigid but smooth uh, focus pull on them. It's, uh, it's enjoyable. It's not negative, but it's, it just feels a little weird. Uh, I mean, you know me, I'm always about weird. Now, this is Scott here from the future just butting in, as I've never actually done before, but I felt like I needed to. On the IRX 150, it has an 86 millimeter threaded uh, filter size, but it's also a standard 95 millimeter on the outside. So it's gonna work with a lot of matte box choices and you could do screw on filters, should you choose that. And I am i don't know how to leave, how do I leave this? How do I get back to me? Oh, snap. I'm still here. Do I? I, I don't, just just go back, Scott. Uh, it comes with a support, which honestly, if you're putting this on Komodo, you're gonna wanna run that support because they come in EF, PL, and a couple of other mounts, uh, and the RF mount on here does not support a lot of weight. So definitely use that foot. You could take that on and off. It comes with magnetized uh, front hoods. They just go on and they stay on quite well. So let's talk about some negatives of this lens. The focus markings are interesting to say the least. And it took me about a week to figure out that they had buried some numbers in there. So it overlaps. If you see here, it goes all the way to one foot five inches. And then the barrel continues to rotate for about 90 degrees. Finding those markings, they're in there. They're, they're buried and they're discolored. They're kind of gray as opposed to white. And it took me forever to, to find them because usually I'm kind of shooting in a very low lit with a, a purpose lighting for macro shots. So I never saw these until very recently. They're there, but they're kind of hidden and they're overlapped and integrated into the other side. So if you're looking for the other side focus markings, uh, I found that to be confusing and Almost difficult, to say the least. Um, what are some other, it's, it's a 2.4-ish pound, I think it's a little more than 2.4 pound lens, so it's got some heft to it. It's not a six pound monster, uh, It's but it's not a cheap Rokinon either. It is a well-built, it's got some heft, and it's cinevised. So, I mean, you're not gonna use this for photography much, and the reason I say that is it is also not image stabilized. Now, you don't really think of image stabilization and video to be married, but when you are talking about macro, I mean, tapping a lens can seriously wobble everything that's, that it's in frame. At 150 millimeters, it's magnified, well, quite literally, uh, magnified those those vibrations. So 100 millimeter, I'm used to the image stabilization in this, at 150, with no image stabilization, you had better be well planted because any little jitter and shake is going to show up. So lack of image stabilization, the focus markings, those are, those are kind of my gripes. I mean, it's not fair to say, well, I, it doesn't have image stabilization. Uh, 
I mean, I know that it when you buy it, it doesn't come with hyper stabilization. So, yeah, but it's a negative. It's something that you should make sure that you understand before you purchase. I mean, there, there's not a whole lot of gripes for this this lens. Let's go to the positives because there's quite a few of those. Uh, it's a 150 millimeter uh, check. Uh, that's definitely something that I have been wanting uh, over the 100. And you know, Canon does have a 180. However, I find that to be a little too long sometimes. So I've always found when I was shooting with the uh, 70 to 200 with the macro tubes, I was in the 135 to 150 range a lot when I didn't need 100. So it's 150. That's nice. It's fast. It's a T3, which is, I mean, I don't think you'd want much faster on a macro because, I mean, like the hair would be in focus, but also the hair would not be in focus. Yeah, not, not the same. Uh, it's very smooth. It's well built. It's rugged. It comes with a support foot. Uh, let's see. What am I missing? Oh, it's sharp. It is tack sharp. It is unbelievably sharp. That's huge for macro. It's huge, as I explained before. The other positive, the price. These things, they sell for just over $1,000. But <laughs> if you've been following along the channel lately, there's a group, Red Komodo Users, on Facebook. Why did my voice just crack? That's just awesome. Um, in that group, there's a special deal on these lenses only for Red Komodo users. I can't tell you what it is. There's a link to the group down below. Join the group and you'll see the deal. It's really a short, limited time on these. So if you're interested, jump, run, get up, go immediately and sign up, get access and get in there. Uh, it's a pretty cool deal. So the positives, they're just over $1,000 but the Red Komodo users group, mm, 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 kind of get my idea. So yeah, it's a, it's a really cool lens. I really, honestly, I didn't know what to expect. I knew that I had seen a lot of product shots that came out of this lens. Uh, Tim Doust, uh, who you've heard me talk about many times, he actually won this lens uh, about a year ago, or almost a year ago, on a raffle online, and he's been using it ever since. He absolutely loves it. So I've been hearing him talk about it and glow about it for, gosh, about a year. And I mean, I was kind of excited to get my hands on it myself. And when I did, I was not, not at all disappointed. I was quite pleasantly happy. Um, I mean, that's, that's really all you really care about when it comes to a lens. Does it do what it, what you want? Yeah, there's a few negatives to it. Not that much. I mean, I, I feel like the, the build quality just feels a little weird, but it feels solid. It feels weird, but it feels solid. It, it has a plastic feel to it, but it's not plastic. It doesn't feel like a Rokinon at all, but it also doesn't feel like a really, really high-end cinema lens either. And I, I, I would preface that with the price point on this. I don't give a flip about that because it's so sharp that even if that price were 150 to 200%, I would still be highly interested in this lens just because how sharp it is. And it suits a purpose. So, you know, that's that's me jumping around kind of a lot. But, I mean, you know how I do these weird kind of reviews where I'm trying to get them out. I'm trying to get them quickly. Uh, I've spent some time with the product, so I understand it. I want to make sure that what I tell you is true. Uh, well, I mean, I wouldn't tell you otherwise. But, I mean, I want, I want to have data to share with you. I need time to shoot with it. Um, I'm happy with this lens. I really am. Uh, I think it will complement this lens a lot, especially when I don't need 100 millimeters and I want something tighter. This one is absolutely going to be used instead of the 70 to 200 with the macro tubes. Um, support it. Use the little foot. Um, yeah, it's it's hard not to like this lens. If you are looking for a macro 
and you don't care about in-body stabilization and you're looking for Cinevised, I would recommend this lens. Are there better lenses out there? Yeah, there are. Uh, for the price, no, no, not even close. Um, there are lenses out there that are about twice the price that are equally as fantastic as this lens. But again, I just said those words, equally as fantastic as this lens, and this lens is about half the price. Math, folks, math, do the math. So I hope this video really helps you understand what this lens is, what it's not, uh, and you know, whether or not it is something that you should be looking at. Um, I mean, I just try to give you the information as I have gathered it, as I have noticed, as I have tested, and I share everything that I can with you. I look forward to using it quite a bit. It is actually a very favorite lens of mine. Um, yeah. As always, if you have any questions or comments, put them down below. I try to read and respond to each and every one, even if it's just to say, thank you. Um, uh, remember to like and subscribe. Give me a thumbs up. You know, if you love the video, if you didn't like the video, give me a thumbs down. If you didn't like the video, but you like the lens, give it a thumbs up. Don't give the lens a thumbs down. I mean, you know, uh, remember to click the alert bell, all that good stuff. You can support me with anything down below. And as always, as I like to leave it, don't let your passions center around your life. Let your life center around your passions. <laughs>